so this is my spin cam. Uh, I'm going to be using it to minimize the effect of roll control reversal uh, due to canards on a vertical stabilization system that I have. Um, I think it works pretty well, so I thought uh, I might just make a quick video uh, just to show you all how simple it is to do. Uh, and then if you have a need, um, you can do something like this at, uh, uh, very inexpensively. So the spin can as I've designed it is based on a set of three concentric tubes. Uh, the smallest one for this minimum diameter rocket uh, is the motor tube itself. And uh, if you're not using minimum diameter, but it was a four inch rocket or whatever, you could use uh, a coupler tube uh, for the airframe instead of uh, an airframe tube for the airframe. And then that would be the right size. And then the second tube uh, is an air, uh, airframe tube itself. Uh, I've got a short section of airframe tube and this particular one is actually sitting on the motor thrust ring and the ball bearings used in the spin can will fall or will sit on that surface. That's the lower surface for the ball bearings. Uh, and it's important that that be very square uh, otherwise the uh, fin can won't uh, rotate very well. So the fin can itself is actually a larger diameter tube that you have to roll. Uh, this particular one uh, is rolled on that same airframe diameter tube. So it's the third tube of the three and is the largest. And the, uh, I rolled this particular one out of carbon fiber and uh, the uh, Fins uh, on there are attached with some tip to tip carbon. It's very uh, conventional in that sense. Uh, but the important thing is it's rolled over the airframe diameter tubing so that the airframe diameter tubing will fit inside of it. And so you can see one piece of the airframe tubing in there. Uh, this is the bottom of the fin can section. And, and that uh, surface that you see there is the upper surface for where the ball bearings go. So the ball bearings basically fit between the um, tube on the airframe tube uh, on the bottom and then the tube on the inside the fin can uh, on the top. Those are the surfaces that it rotates on. Maybe a couple of diagrams will make the uh, design of the spin can a little clearer. Uh, as I mentioned, there are three tube sizes basically involved in the design. The smallest one is the motor tube itself. Um, and if you're using a minimum diameter, it's the motor tube. And if you're not minimum diameter, then uh, this can be a coupler tube, say an extended coupler tube, uh, as opposed to airframe uh, for the airframe itself. And then uh, the largest of the three tubes is what I'm calling an oversized fin can tube. Uh, and uh, this typically is something, I guess, that you'd have to roll. Um, I rolled the tube that uh, uh, in my spin can out of carbon fiber using um, a section of airframe tubing as the mandrel for that. So that gives me a good fit between the tin can tube and then the airframe tubing that's between the two, uh, the smallest and the largest tubes. So that airframe tube, uh, there's three sections of that in my design. Two of them are shown here, and uh, those tubes are actually glued to the fin can tube. And then the third down here is uh, a section of airframe tubing that's connected to the motor tube. And I just sort of have a pressure fit using some tape around the motor tube so that it sort of centers the airframe tube uh, around the motor. And then the ball bearings go in between the two surfaces and basically they're held between the two airframe sections and then the smaller motor tube and the larger fin can tube. Uh, and they do their function uh, constrained between those different uh, surfaces. It's real important to have the uh, two airframe sections as square and flat as possible so that the ball bearings can are free and can uh, uh, slide easily and that the pressure on them is even uh, around the, uh, the whole perimeter of the airframe tube section. 
The last part of this is the uh, upper airframe section. In my design, uh, it is a piece of airframe uh, and it just slides over the motor and basically its main function is to hold the, um, uh, the fin can section in place. And on my design, I use front end retention and basically that uh, pulls the whole assembly together uh, so that it stays uh, as a single unit. The ball bearings that you use depend a little bit on, on the, how you roll the tube and that takes a little bit of thinking through in order to, to get the right size. Uh, the particular ones that I'm using are 5 64 inches and I think it's about 160 of them uh, go uh, and sit on, sit on those uh, surfaces that I showed you. So the way this all goes together is quite simple. Um, I just have the, uh, uh, the fin can just slides on over the top of the motor. And usually at this point you turn the, the whole thing upside down and then you can pour the bearings in uh, on top of the upper ceiling surface and slide that down. And then I have a, an upper airframe section here that just simply slides onto the top of the motor. And in my case, I have the rail guides on there and then the front end retention is used to hold, the, hold that upper airframe onto the motor case and that sandwiches the whole thing together. And so that's about it. The, um, cost of this if you don't count um, rolling the little tube for the fin can section the cost basically is just the ball bearings uh, and it's about 25 bucks is what they cost for the for enough of them um, and uh, that's about it so you can see this whole thing is very simple so if you need to find you have a need to do something like this uh, this is a pretty easy way to go about doing it thanks